This lecture is about the evaluation of text categorization. So we've talked about uh, many different methods for text categorization, but how do you know which method works better? And for a particular application, how do you know uh, you, uh, this is the best way of solving your problem? To understand these, we have to, uh, uh, how to, uh, we have to know how to evaluate categorization results. So first, some general thoughts about the evaluation. Uh, in general, for evaluation of this kind of empirical tasks, such as categorization, we use a methodology that was developed in 1960s by information retrieval researchers called Cranfield Evaluation Methodology. The basic idea is to help humans to create a test collection um, where we already know uh, every document is tagged with the desired categories or in the case of search, uh, for which query, uh, which documents should have been retrieved. And this is called ground truth. Now with this ground truth test collection, we can then uh, reuse the collection to test the many different systems and compare different systems. We can also uh, turn off some component in the system to see what's going to happen. Basically, it provides a, a, a way to uh, do control experiments to compare different methods. So this methodology has been virtually used uh, um, for all the tasks that involve uh, empirically defined problems. So in our case then, we are going to um, compare our system's categorization results with the categorization ground truths created by humans. And we're going to compare our system's decisions on which documents should get which category with what uh, categories have been assigned to those documents by humans. And we want to quantify the similarity of these decisions or equivalently to uh, measure the difference between the system output and the desired ideal uh, output generated by the humans. So obviously the higher similarity is the better the results are. The similarity can be measured in different ways and that would lead to different measures and sometimes it's desirable also to measure the similarity from different perspectives just to have a better understanding of the results in detail. For example, we might be also interested in uh, knowing which category performs better, which category is easy to categorize, etc. Uh, in general, uh, different categorization mistakes, uh, however, have uh, different costs for a specific application. So some errors might be more serious than others. So ideally, uh, we would like to model such differences. But uh, if you read many papers in text categorization, you will see that they don't generally do that. And instead, they will use a simplified measure. And that's because it's often okay not to consider such a cost variation when we compare different methods and we, when we are interested in knowing the relative difference of these methods. Uh, so it's okay to introduce some bias as long as the bias is not correlated with a particular method. And then we should still expect a more effective method to perform better um, than a less effective one, even though the measure is not perfect. So the first measure that we will introduce is called classification accuracy. And this is basically to measure the percentage of correct decisions. So here you show that, uh, here, here you see that there are K categories denoted by C1 through CK, and there are N documents denoted by D1 through DN. And for each pair of a category and a document, we can then look at the situation uh, and see if the system has said yes to this pair, basically has assigned this category to this document or no. So this is denoted by Y or N, that's the system's decision. And similarly, we can look at the human's decision also. If the human has assigned a, a category to the document, then there will be a plus sign here. That's just the, that just means the human uh, would think this assignment is correct. And uh, if it's incorrect, then there's a minus. So we will see uh, all combinations of these ends, uh, yes and no's, with minus and pluses. So there are four combinations in total, and two of them are correct. And that's when we have Y plus or N minus, right? And then there are also two kinds of errors. 
So the measure of classification accuracy is simply to count how many of these decisions are correct and normalize that by the total number of decisions we have made. So we know that the total number of decisions uh, is n multiplied by k and the number of correct decisions obviously are basically of two kinds. One is y pluses and the other is n minuses and we just put together the, the counts. Now this is a very convenient measure uh, that will give us one number uh, to characterize performance of uh, a method and the higher the better of course. But the method uh, also has some problems. Uh, first, uh, it has treated all the decisions equally. So, um, but in reality, some decision errors are more serious than others. For example, it may be more important to get the decisions right on some documents than others, and, and, or maybe more important to get the decisions right on some categories than others. And this would uh, call for uh, some detailed evaluation of these results uh, to understand um, the strengths and weakness of different methods uh, and to understand uh, uh, the performance of these methods in detail uh, in, a, uh, in a per category or per document uh, basis. Uh, one example uh, that shows clearly the decision errors are, are having different causes is spam filtering. That could be retrieved as a two category categorization problem. Missing a legitimate email is, all, is one type of error but um, letting a spam to come into your folder is another type of error. The two types of errors are clearly very different because it's very important not to miss a legitimate email. It's okay to occasionally let a spam email to come into in your inbox. So the error of the first uh, missing a legitimate email is very uh, is of high cost. It's a very serious mistake. And classification error, uh, classification accuracy does not address this issue. There's also another problem with imbalanced test set. Imagine there's a skilled test set where most instances are in category one, and 98% of instances are in category one. Only 2% are in category two. In such a case, we can have a very simple baseline that actually performs very well, and that baseline would simply put all instances in the major category. And that would give us 98% accuracy in this case. It's going to be um, appearing to be very effective, but in reality, this is obviously not a good result. Right? And so, in general, when we use classification accuracy as a measure, we want to ensure that the classes are balanced. And we want about equal number of instances, for example, in each class. The minority categories or classes tend to be uh, overlooked in the evaluation of classification accuracy. Now to address these problems, we of course would like to also evaluate uh, um, the results in uh, other ways and in different ways. As I said, it's beneficial to look at the actual multiple perspectives. So for example, we can look at the, the perspective from each document, uh, perspective based on each document. So the question here is, how could other decisions on this document? Now, as in the general uh, cases of all decisions, we can think about the uh, four combinations of uh, possibilities depending on whether the system has said yes and depending on whether the human has said it uh, correct or incorrect or said yes or no. And so the four combinations um, are first, when both the human and system said yes, and that's true positives. When the system says yes, it's actually positive. So when the system says yes, it's a positive, but uh, when the human confirmed that it is indeed correct, that becomes a true positive. When the system says yes, but the human says no, that's incorrect, that's a false positive, FP. And when the system says no, but the human says yes, then it's a false negative. We missed one assignment. When both the system and human said uh, no, then that's also a correct decision, that's true negatives. Right, so and then we can uh, have some measures to, to just uh, um, better characterize uh, the performance by using these four numbers. And so two popular measures are precision and recall. And these are, were also proposed by information retrieval researchers in 1960s for evaluating search results, but now they have become a standard measure used everywhere. So when the system says yes, we can uh, ask uh, the question, how many are correct? What's the percent of correct uh, decision when the system says yes, that's called a precision. 
Uh, it's a true positive divided by all the cases when the system says yes, all the positives. The other, recall, uh, the other mesh is called recall, and this mesh is uh, whether the document has uh, got all the categories it should have. So in this case, it's divided the true positive uh, by uh, true positives and the false negatives. So these are all the cases where uh, the human says the document should have this category. So this represents the, all the categories that it should have got. And so recall tells us whether the system has actually indeed assigned all the categories that it should have to this document. This gives us a detailed view of the decisions on each document. Then we can aggregate them later. Right? And if we're interested in some documents, and this would uh, tell us how well we did on that those documents, a subset of them might be more interesting than others, for example. And this allows us to analyze errors in more detail as well. We can separate the documents of certain characteristic from others and then look at the errors. You might see a pattern, hey, for this kind of document, this is long documents, it doesn't do as well as um, for short documents. And this gives you some insight for improving the method. Similarly, we can look at the per category, per category evaluation. In this, in this case, we're going to look at the how good are the decisions on a particular category. And as in the previous case, we can define precision and recall. And it will just uh, basically answer um, the questions from a different perspective. Right? So when the system says yes, uh, how many are correct? That means uh, looking at this category to see if all the documents that are assigned uh, with this category are indeed in this category. Right? And recall would tell us, has the category been actually assigned to all the documents that should have this category? It's sometimes also useful to combine precision and recall uh, as one measure, and this is um, often done by using an if measure. And this is just a harmonic mean of precision and recall defined on this slide. And it, it's also controlled by a parameter beta to, um, uh, to uh, indicate whether precision is more important or recall is more important. When beta is set to one, we have a measure called F1. And in this case, uh, we just uh, take a uh, uh, equal weight on both precision and recall. Right? Uh, F1 is very often used uh, as, a, as a measure for categorization. Now, as in all cases, when we combine results, you always should think about the best way of combining them. So in this case, I don't know if you have thought about it, and um, we could have uh, combined them just uh, with the arithmetic mean, right? So that would still give the same range of values. But obviously, there's a reason why we didn't do that and uh, why F1 is more popular. And it's actually useful to think about the difference. And if you think about that, you, you will see that, uh, that uh, there is indeed some difference and some um, undesirable property of this arithmetic mean. Basically, it will be obvious to you if you think about a case uh, when the system says yes for all the category and document pairs. And you can try to compute the precision and recall in that case and see what would happen. Right? Basically, um, this kind of measure will um, not, the, the arithmetic mean is not going to be as reasonable as F1, which tends to prefer a trade-off between precision and recall um, so that the, the two values are about equal. So uh, we, we, if there's an extreme case where you have zero um, for one value and one for the other, then um, F1 will be low, but the arithmetic mean would still be uh, reasonably high. 